first job is to get the heart going again, otherwise all of the other body systems will soon stop working. The chart shows that his heart has started to beat again. It's beating normally now, pushing blood round and round his body. In the 17th century, scientists thought blood was used up and you had to eat to make new blood. William Harvey thought this was silly. To stay alive, he'd have to eat his own weight in food every 20 minutes. There had to be some link between the blood flowing in his body and the beating of his heart. If only he could see the connection. Water pumps had just been invented. His heart must be a pump too, pushing blood around his body over and over again, out through the arteries and back through the veins. Why did it take so long for scientists to believe him? These are microscopic living things. All living things are made from cells. But nobody could have guessed that until the invention of the microscope. Henri Dutrochet was fascinated by plants and put them under his new microscope. They all looked much the same, and he guessed they must be made of the same tiny units. He called them cells. He wondered if animals were made from cells too, and there was only one way to find out. What he had was a scientific eye. What they've got is a bullseye. They're collecting cells from its surface. What do you think the cells will look like? How many cells are there here? And where are their edges? They're going to change to a more powerful lens. What difference will that make? There are two overlapping cells here. How would you describe them?
In the middle, there's a nucleus, and round the outside, there's a thin bag called a membrane. Fred is a Xenopus toad. Every few weeks, toads lose their top layer of skin, and bits fall to the bottom of the tank. What do you think toad skin will look like under the microscope? How is it different from the bullseye cells? These cells are joined together to form a thin sheet. This is the membrane round one single skin cell. The cells have to join up tightly at the edges so that the skin is waterproof and keeps the toad's insides in. Cells always look flat under the microscope, but are they really two-dimensional? If you look at a lily under a magnifying glass, you can just about see its pollen cells. Are they circles or spheres? <laughs> Like all cells, they're three-dimensional. What goes on inside them? What do cells actually do? These are simple living things. Living things need oxygen. And they need food. This is an amoeba an animal made of just one cell. And this is how it tackles its lunch. Why do cells need food? One thing that cells do is to make new cells. These cells are in dog spit. They're dividing to make lots more cells. These are yeast cells. Each cell is a complete living thing. Yeast cells can multiply very quickly you can see it happening in this specially coloured film. This block of fresh yeast contains millions of live yeast cells. Every cell can turn food and oxygen into energy. How can you tell? First, you need to mix the yeast cells with water. What do you think the sugar's for?
This is a special yeast battery. Put the yeast mixture in and the battery can run an electric motor. How can you be sure that it's the yeast that makes the battery work? Yeast can do more than produce energy. Why is it used in baking? One of these loaves contains yeast and the other doesn't. Which is which? What makes these holes? Bleach is a poison. What will happen when they add bleach to the yeast battery? Plants grow by making lots of new cells. Keen gardeners like to keep the growth under control. But there's always one plant that gives trouble. What's the best way to wipe out a weed? Why do you think the poison worked when the other methods failed?
sprays aren't always used to kill plants. Some sprays are designed to attack pests and diseases. This plant has cancer. Some of its cells are growing too fast. Its systems can't keep control of them. The cancer might have occurred naturally or it might have been caused by some poison. Do you think it's a good idea to spray plants that are going to be eaten? Can you keep a garden lovely without using chemical warfare? What health hazards do we come across every day? What might happen if you let chemicals get into your cells and systems? Hey, 